The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets in positive territory to kick things off. Got the ADP numbers this morning, private payrolls, a little bit weaker than the market was anticipating, especially interesting ahead of Friday's non-farm payroll numbers. We'll get into those in a moment. But markets, liking that number, you see a little bit of 830 volatility. Let's put it on a five-minute chart just to see that volatility right around 830. There you were on that 830 number. Originally, we dipped lower on some weak numbers, and from there, the market takes off. Maybe the premise is, hey, we got a little bit of weakness. That's putting a little bit of a bid into bonds on the fact that maybe we do get some cuts coming down the line if the market is showing some weakness in the job sector and the S&P is right now up by 23 points right now, 53.26, almost half a percent. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 8, 7 tenths percent, we'll call it. 18,837, you got NVIDIA, going to open at all-time highs this morning. The Dow up 122 points, 38,909, and the Russell up by 12 this morning, 2,049. I mentioned NVIDIA. How about it? NVIDIA, overnight, you're going to open by about $15 to the upside. You're trading at 1181. We hit 1184. And for some context, there it is. That's going to be an all time high print. Yesterday, you hit an all time high 1166. We had an all time high of 1158 prior to that. And the market is going to open at 1181. Got us. Got to check in on the meme stocks. Relatively flat overnight. Roaring Kitty with no YOLO update. What does that mean, right? How do you interpret when there's no YOLO update when there had been YOLO updates? Nonetheless, we'll see how that goes this morning. GameStop trading at 2650. You jump over to AMC shares this morning. AMC trading at 473. We jump down the line. Commodities. Is Bitcoin a commodity? Close enough. 71,675. Not bad. Crude. With a 73 handle, 73.49, we'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour today. We'll talk a little bit of currencies. We'll talk a little bit of crude, as we always do. Always interesting to get his take on crude, especially with this pullback we've had. And the OPEC news, gold catches a little bit of a bid overnight. A little volatility in both directions on gold, right? Quite the move yesterday. You dive down to 23.48. We're basically back at the highs. Excuse me, that's overnight. Yesterday, you dive down to 23.35. We make it back overnight to 23, what, 61 about, and we're right back to that area after dipping below 23.50. Gold up $14 on the session right now at 23.62. You jump over the dollar index. DXY 104.21, we'll call it on the dollar. And we take a look at notes and bonds on that economic data. There's a little bit of volatility around 8.30. We're trading at 110.02 right now. You're up by two ticks. And you're talking about right now a 10-year yield of 4.32%. 4.3. We on the way back to 4%? I don't know. We'll find out. But as you see, quite a steep incline in the price of the bonds. We were just trading at 108 coming into the end of May. We're already back above 110 right now. You're now above where you were on May 16th on that 10-year. And, yeah, what's it going to take to get lower rates? Well, you know what it's going to take, folks? It's going to take some weak jobs data, allowing the Fed to potentially bring some cuts prior to the end of the year, and at least for the ADP, 152,000. And that might be just weak enough to take them off of the pedestal where they are right now. You have to remember, the Fed's at five and a quarter to five and a half percent, right? They can bring that number down and still argue that they're being restrictive, right? The R star, the natural grade of, rate of growth in the economy, they want to match that R star. It'd be very hard pressed probably to make the argument right now that R star, the natural rate of the economy, where the Fed would be to not be restrictive or to allow it to grow, probably well below 5% right now. Even if you argue inflation is still at 3 or 4%, you could bring that number down to 4%. You still wouldn't be allowing growth. You'd be kind of flat. They're at 5.25 to 5.5%. So even if you bring it to 4 and 3 quarters percent, you bring it to 4.5%, you can make the case that you're still restrictive. 
Okay, so keep that in mind, as in they're not just going to go back to status quo just yet. They're at a relatively high interest rate, all things considering. Private payrolls rising to 152,000 in May, slightly below forecast. Okay, forecast was a pretty low number as well. Job losses in manufacturing were the steepest since last July. You get into the numbers. Manufacturing firms cut 20,000 jobs. When you take a look at this on a chart, you got the change in payrolls. Okay, we add 152,000. On the bottom here, we have change in wages for job stayers in the black line. And the gray line is change in wages for job changers. Absolutely remarkable that you are still dealing with changing in wages for job changers of almost 8%, change in wages for job stayers of still at 5%. Now, that's a lagging indicator, okay? Of course, it's a lagging indicator, right? People are in their jobs. By the time they eventually end up changing, they want that pay raise that they haven't gotten, et cetera. So the number of people who are in, in the changing sector, obviously going to be a higher, 7.8%, though. Those are some big numbers. And when you look at the change in payrolls, yeah, you could call that a weakening number at 152. But I would make the case, man, that you go back to September of last year, and we're just chopping around between about 150 and 200,000. Still a relatively decent number when you look at the unemployment rate as well. Now, taking that, we jump to the CNBC article for a moment just because they have some of the numbers in here I want to get to as well. Nearly all the hiring came from the service sector, with goods producers contributing just a net 3,000 total. So it's all about services right now. Okay, Trade, transportation, and utilities – Led with 55,000 new, education and health services added 46,000, construction contributed 32,000, and other services categories added 21,000. But leisure and hospitality, a leading contributor over the past several years, just 12,000 is where that number is. So it's all in what? Transportation and utilities, education and health, construction. How about that? 32,000 and then 21,000 in the other category. As the Bloomberg article mentioned, manufacturing lost 20,000. That's been a contraction for most of the past year. Other categories seeing decreases. Decreases. Natural resource and mining down 9,000. Information, 7. Professional and business services, 6,000. Small businesses also saw a decline. Small businesses down 36,000 employees. And then they give a segue to the non-farm payroll number. Now, Yeah, the non-farm payroll is looking for 190,000 in May after growing by 175,000 the previous month in there. So this number that comes in for May on the private payroll is 152,000. April was downwardly revised to 188,000, but the consensus was only 175. Okay, so you're only talking about, what, 20,000, 23,000 missed to the downside? If that's a deal breaker for the economy, folks, you're only talking about 20,000 missed from the expectation on a monthly basis on the private payroll. We get the non-farm number on Friday. You really get a big miss on Friday, then, yeah, watch out. What I will say is the 10 years are already at 4.3. We've already seen quite a rise in prices from a 107 handle in April to a 110 handle in the 10-year. So things are starting to get priced in already. And what is going to happen to equity prices when you slow down in actual growth of the economy starts getting factored in as we teeter your all-time highs? Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. Got a lot to talk about. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up by 22 points. It's going to be interesting to see how the market digests this number. Friday is going to be the main event. Non-farm payrolls coming at you Friday morning, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And I love the way you have to think about this, though, right? Many times when we went through this type of an event earlier where you're talking about you couldn't even really guarantee if you knew if bad news was going to be good news or good news was going to be bad news or what the market would do with a number, whether it was hot or not, because is the Fed in focus? Is the economy in focus? What is the market going to be watching right now? Is it going to be hell-bent on making sure that if we get bad data, it's going to rejoice because that means we get cuts coming down the line? Or if we get bad data, is it going to freak out over the fact that maybe the, the, the fundamentals underlying this economy aren't as strong as all-time highs would indicate? We get to find out Friday, man. But we are literally right at all-time highs right now. I mean, there's your highs, right? We got one in April at 53.33. We're about seven points off that price level right now. We chopped around nearing 53.50 for what? About five, six days in the middle of May. We actually hit a high of 53.68.25 intraday in the futures on the S&P. And we, again, I mean, we just rose 125 points since where we were May 31st. 53.26 right now in the S&Ps. And yeah, when you take a look at a daily basis, right, where's the volume? Where does it stick out right away? Well, we got a little bit of volume down at these lows, that's for sure. What do we got? 2.26 million shares at that low. We take a look again. The next bar that sticks out is 1.9 when we were down at 50.50. The next big bar is that downward acceleration from the all-time highs. Okay, we made the all-time high before you gave it up. Almost 2 million shares on that day as well. And then on the day that you charged higher from that low, 2.3 million out there so we'll see where we go the last couple of days 1.7 and 1.6 as we're teetering around 5300 we're sitting right now at 5327 
we jump back to notes for a second. So we're right back to basically a 50% retracement from this move of December down to the lows of 107.04. We made that on April 25th. We're now at a 110 handle. So the 10 years risen three points. We jump over to the article we have from Bloomberg today and this article out last night updated this morning okay bond traders pile into fresh bets on a faster pace of Fed cuts what did I say we're at right now I think 5.32 something like that let's pull it up 5.32 exactly 5.32 is where we are right now on the tenure now it is interesting here so I'm just gonna pull this over for some context of where we've been on the yield okay and check it out, man. I mean, we were just sitting at 4.6, May 29th. That is a mammoth move in only a few days, okay? Let alone reaching the 5% mark. And talk about pegging it to the to the round number, man. We hit, what did this give us? 4.996 is what I can get. So what is that? It's the 10th, 100th, 4 one thousandths of a point from there. In October, and I think we did hit it at one point. Nonetheless, this chart, when you're putting it, and then we get all the way down to 3.78 to kick off the year. You rise a full percentage point from where we were in April, and right now we're sitting to 4.32. So quite a little bit of a pullback, quite a give back from 4.62. Now, I mention that because what they're talking about here is how things have changed so quickly. Already, you're talking about Swap traders have moved up expectations for the Fed's first full 25 basis cut to November from December is where you're at. You have the 10-year rates declining more than a quarter point in recent trading sessions. That's what I just went over. Pretty remarkable. Uh, further reports on private jobs growth and economic activity due Wednesday. We already got those. They're weak numbers. That's just going to add fuel to the fire potentially today. And when you look at the Fed swaps, price first cut the Fed swaps price the first cut in November for the FOMC, okay? And here's November. That's the November FOMC. And this is going to be the rate cuts priced in is in blue. And the Fed projection is going to be in black, okay, in terms of where they make it to. And you can see where the market is gradually going. And where they're going is that by next December, you're going to get six cuts. Boy, next December is going to be here before you know it, folks. I know it's only June, okay? But what's going to happen to the economy if we get six cuts and that brings the Fed's per target rate back to 4%? That is a lofty number. And it really gets you to between four and five cuts by September. And it gets you to almost four cuts in the next year. So nonetheless, you see the action there. You see how things have changed. Now, I'm going to pull up the CMB FedWatch tool, which I like to jump around to as well sometimes. And what's interesting here is we're going to go out to now the June meetings, nothing. But let's go out to November. OK, this is the November meeting. And right now. There is your price in terms of the probability that the Fed drops one cut into the market is about 50% by then. But what's interesting here is that where they're pricing it is that they're showing that there's almost a 50-50 chance that we get, if we don't get one cut, there's just as high of a probability almost that we stay where we are as there is that we get two cuts by then. And actually two is there and you actually get an outlier risk of three cuts by then. We get three cuts by November. That's not going to be good for this market. Okay, you get three cuts by November, and things accelerate that quickly from where we are right now. Let alone even two cuts, I would argue, man. So interesting numbers by the time you get to November. September, we back it up to. They're meeting September 18th. Yeah, look at that, man. Even a bigger number there at 56.8 is the number 31.8 very low likelihood you get three cuts by then is what they're doing but a 57 percent chance this is a cme fed watch tool 57 percent we get one cut by the time you get to september and about a 31.8 percent chance that you stay where you are by september as well and look how things have accelerated the, the thing i like most about this tool because this is not a holy grail to follow folks is that it gives you an idea of 
how things have changed. You can go back a week. You can go back a month. You can see where those percentages are. And let's even go to the July one and see where they're bringing us. Now, the next meeting is a week from today, June 12th, okay? And, yeah, so the July meeting, they have us right where we are and about an 18% chance we change. So things really start moving in the September meeting. September, there's about a 58% chance. But only one week ago, that number was 42%. It's a mammoth difference when you look at the percentage, right? One week ago, there was a 52% chance that we don't get a cut just in this tool by September. And right now, there's only a 32% chance. 52 to 32 on the fact that rates stay where they are in September. So we get a big number on Friday. We got a little bit of an indication today. And we get the 10-year up another three ticks. We get the 10-year rate at 4.32%. And stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for that market open. We'll see where supply equals demand as it digests ADP private payrolls. We got a lot to talk about. And don't forget, we got Teddy coming up at 40 past the hour. We're going to talk a little bit of Tesla when we get back. Stay tired. tuned. You've seen his show. You've learned from his webinars. And now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P up by four tenths percent right now, fifty three twenty five. Nasdaq one hundred up by three quarters percent. Nasdaq one hundred only within about one percent of the all time highs. That number just over nineteen thousand. You check out the Dow. Dow we got a little bit of a ways to go. About fifteen hundred points to get to that forty thousand three hundred mark. Dow trading thirty eight thousand eight eighty three, up about a quarter percent. And you got the Russell up by twelve points right now. 
That's about six tenths percent. We take a look at notes and bonds as the market opens. The ten year, one ten oh five continuing to rise, right? Check it out. Even as we open, pushing the highs right now. One ten oh five as you get the ten year at about four point three two. And let's jump over to Tesla. Tesla shares. Yeah, be careful of Tesla, folks. It's dropping. We may even go short in this newsletter in this uh equity in my newsletter today. And the news out there today, so the vote coming down the line. Is it June 13th? Yeah, June 13th. So Tesla's got a shareholder meeting eight days from today, a week from tomorrow. The shareholder meeting is scheduled for June 13th. They're talking about the pay package, of course. you got one of the biggest shareholders out there, Ron Barron. He's been a bull forever. He's made 20 times on his money. And he is voting for that pay package. And the one thing that's interesting is I think he probably understands that Elon is out if he doesn't get this pay package. So you should understand that too. Because I think that's what's at stake right now. And look at the video, man. Opens at 11.84. We trail off a bit, but you're talking about all-time highs. Had to take a peek. Uh, yeah, Tesla, already down about half a percent. You just dropped $2. I mean, the story's out there, and Elon replied. Okay, he replied to the story about the NVIDIA chips that he is sending to his private companies. And these are private companies, folks. They're private companies that he owns. I was talking to, I think it was maybe even Jacob yesterday after the program, and I was saying, any other CEO, man, this would be the biggest story you ever heard of, right? If the CEO of Google was ordering AI chips, talking about it on his earnings call, and then you find out that he had a private company that he was shipping those chips to as opposed to taking them first as, Nvidia, as a Google shit, I mean, it's just bonkers. And you're seeing the writing on the wall. And so I think uh, Ron Barron's a little bit worried that if he doesn't get this pay package, he's out. And I think he'd be right. And I think there's a very distinct chance that he may not get this pay package. And I don't think he deserves the pay package, folks. Okay? He's arguing that he doesn't have the ownership interest to stay interested in Tesla. you got to remember, he sold off those shares to buy Twitter himself. Okay? And that dropped his ownership level way below where he wanted it. And now he just wants all that money back to replicate where it was. And, you know, the board of directors, okay, the big problem with the pay package in the first place was that the judge made the determination, I think rightfully so, that independent board of directors was a suspect term in light of the relationship that he has with many of those board of director uh, members, especially the ones that are deemed independent. Again, where is the board of directors and what's going on here? They're supposed to represent the shareholders. And Elon's excuse was that they didn't have the space to use those NVIDIA chips, right? So he's making the case, hey, the reason why we sent them is that we weren't even going to use them right now. All they were going to do is take up space. So where's the next question? Then why are you spending so much money of capital expenditure on NVIDIA chips that you can't even use right now? Where's that next question? Okay, both of them are bonkers. Um, and Barron knows that if he doesn't get this, he's gone. And this company is valued off of the future of Elon Musk. Okay? It is a growth company extraordinaire. It is not valued off the fundamentals of this company right now. And so you better be prepared, folks, if you're in this equity, that June 13th is coming down the line. If Elon does not get that pay package... He may be out, and if he goes out, who knows where this thing ends up dropping, okay? Because you got to remember as well that even Elon could end up selling all his shares he has in this equity because if he gets down to about 100, then which it just hit at the beginning of last year, okay, and it got within what, 40 points of where it was and just a couple months ago almost in terms of trading down to a low of 138.80, it gets down anywhere near $100. He might have a margin call, and there's no way he's going to sell his shares in the private companies like to, um, OpenAI or SpaceX or put them up to, mar to collateralize his margin that he has on his current Tesla shares. He'd probably just sell the Tesla shares, move on and maintain his ownership positions in his new private equities and and do it all over again, which is what he's done with Tesla. Yeah, pretty remarkable, man. Um, and not surprising, I think. The Tesla's down a buck 46 this morning. You're down 8 tenths percent at the same time that you get the market trading to higher price right now with the NASDAQ up about 7 tenths percent right now. We jump around to some of the other FANG stocks. 
we got to ditch that term, I guess, right? The Magnificent Seven. Apple shares. Quite a resurgence from Apple, man, in the last month. Off of that earnings call, you were trading at 165. We're at 195. Whew. You talk about an acceleration, right? That's a weekly. Let's put it on a daily to see the run it's had. There's your earnings call. You come in at about 170. And, yeah, it's been a rocket ship to 195 for Apple shares. You take a look at Microsoft shares. 41717 up about a quarter percent. You take a look at Google shares this morning, up about nine tenths percent for Google. You take a look at Amazon shares. Amazon down two tenths percent, 178.95 right now for Amazon. Check back to Nvidia. Not bad. Nvidia up another full percent to an 1180 handle, 1181.65. You talk about a run, man. We check out AMD. Up 1.4%, but boy, they've had a, lot, a couple rough days the last couple days. And then you jump over to Intel, INTC, for Intel shares. You talk about some woes, man. Intel, how about yesterday, right? Yeah, this thing trades higher on the news that they got new chips coming out. And then you drop like a rocket ship, man. And what do we do today? We're dropping again. Nobody can compete with NVIDIA right now. That's the bottom line. You got market up about 17 points, NASDAQ up about 120, Intel shares barely positive, and we drop back almost right near the lows of where we were yesterday. Pretty wild stuff. All right, what else we got to talk about here? Let's see, what do we got pulled up? Yeah, we talked jobs, private payrolls, we talked bonds, we'll talk some dollar, and we'll talk some crew with our man Teddy when we come back. Yeah, this one's an interesting, talking about rights how about 76 billion dollars for the nba nearing a 76 billion dollar tv deal defining moment for media and sports they're in talks with nbc amazon and espn staggering value yeah you talk about it man the average regular season viewership now of course it's dwarfed by the nfl but the NBA's got so many games, man, right? So many games. So it's going to be an 11-year deal. They got three bidders out there with NBC, ESPN, and, AM, um, and Amazon. Talking about $76 billion. It's going to pay an average of about... NBC is going to pay an average of about $2.5 billion a year. It's going to show 100 games per season. Half of them going to air exclusively on Peacock. That's the part I wanted to get to, Okay exclusively on Peacock. Now, I'll tell you, folks, Peacock, I just got a heck of a deal out there for Peacock recently, and I signed up for it for the Kentucky Derby, okay? And I got a year of it, a year of it, for like 29 bucks. A year is 60 bucks. I found a 50% off first year for 29 bucks. I'm saying to my dad, it's going back to just regular TV, man. All they want is the ability to serve you ads. Nonetheless, I'm, I'm hooked on Peacock now. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Are Teddy Are you ready Kekstad. to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by about excuse me, positive by 15 points, trading at 53.20. And we're going to talk to our man, Teddy Kegstad, like we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. And folks, if you haven't checked out Teddy's outstanding weekly Tiger Forex report, comes out every Monday with new issues, updates throughout the week when warranted. You also get a subscriber webinar included in there that Teddy did recently as well. You can check that out right under the newsletter tab at TFNN. You subscribe. It's $97. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can't go wrong there. And he's also got a couple of great webinars under the services tab Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies with Teddy that's $97 as well and if you're into options at all this one was a great one man a little bit of a complex strategy but he broke it down so well capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads with Teddy that one over there on the services tab as well so check those out and Teddy cakes that good morning what's happening man Good morning, Tom. We have some nice moves to talk about in the bonds and the 10 year crude dollar index. Where do you want to start? I love it. Um, yeah, where do you want to start? I guess we got the, the ADP number today. So we've had the yields, I guess. Let's talk a little bit of yields because we've had a little bit of a pullback. We were just at a 4.6 handle on the 10 year. Um, we're approaching 4.3% just that quickly. And of course, that's driving some of the action as we're a week away from this Fed meeting. But you know, you start going out, the market's shifting. And on the heels of that private payroll number, given a little bit of fuel potentially that maybe we get as the market, you know, it moves so quickly these days on, on what it thinks is going to happen. But maybe we get a cut or two through the um, end of the year. So maybe starting, you know, with the with that, with the yields, with the Fed, with with some of that jobs data ahead of Friday. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, this is just the same bad movie that we've seen so many times before. This is all reaction off of really minute news. Um, it's sensationalizing things. You know, when the market's in a range trade and it's not moving very much, it doesn't take much of a move to look like a gigantic move, you know. So um, the bond market and the 10-year market bottomed out last uh, Thursday, and we had that, um, you know, initial jobless claims last week, which was only 1,000 higher than the week prior. Uh, that's not a big jump in jobless claim. We want higher unemployment because if you want rate cuts, that's what the Fed wants. They want to see a lot of people out of work before they start cutting rates. So that number was not that big of a juicy number, but that's what stopped the, the, the falling bond market. Okay. Then you had the number that came out yesterday. That's the one that I think people really, really, really are taking it into too much, giving it way too much value. So, and that would be the, uh, let me see, let me pull this up, the actual number that came out yesterday. So we had, uh, let's see, the, what do you call it? The jolts job openings. Okay. Yeah. So now that's kind of an answer. It's like a reverse employment number. So now yeah. that number, although 
the job openings is decreasing, which means less opportunity, which is, goes along with higher unemployment, um, that is not that big of a number. OK, um, the reality is, is that the market is still very, very strong when it comes to jobs. You know, like yeah. we're coming off the pandemic and, you know, the, the media is sensationalizing everything because they want the Fed to cut because they've been calling for a rate cut for a year now and it hasn't happened. You know, well, the reality is inflation isn't going away. You know, crude oil has been breaking for a month and finally. Finally, in the past couple of days, you're finally starting to see a downtick in oil prices. And you're talking about like 10 cents when it should be like every bit of 75, 80 cents lower with the move that we've had in oil over the last month. And that's okay. taking away the refine, the sweet refining, switching, blah, 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 which now they're pushing, saying, oh, we're done with the switch for the refining. And so that should lower prices at the pump. Get out of here. You know, that's that's it's, if that was happening, you would see it already. And it is not happening. You know, so these things are going to keep inflation high. I, I don't know about you. The prices at the, at the grocery store are not going down. Okay, so if the prices in the grocery store aren't going down, and the, and the, and the pr price of gas isn't going down, how is inflation going down? That makes no sense. You know, so I, I would say that you know this is a short-term number, it's short-lived. I would watch the jobless claims that come out tomorrow. Now, if jobless claims come out like significantly higher than expected, you know, I mean, then I mean significantly, you know, then we might start to see a trend that you can actually jump on short-term and see let's see how this goes over the next couple of months if it continues to trend that way, and see how the unemployment number comes out on Friday as well. You know, if all of a sudden there is a sharp jump in unemployment. Well, then that would give a little fuel to the narrative of a, of a rate cut coming. But if you think one's coming anytime soon this year, I think that's preposterous. The only thing that would happen, you would have to see corn, wheat, all the raw commodities just tank. I mean, tank. You, you're gonna, I mean, literally, you're going to have to see that happen to have food prices drop to a point where right now the margins – you know, there's an expectation. People are used to paying higher prices. I mean, let's get it. Let's be real. Restaurants are gouging people now. You know, I mean, we keep it with the prices that they have. Those prices aren't coming down. I mean, you when you no. when you tell me that you can go to, um, let's say, Capital Grill Steakhouse and all of a sudden they're going to start lowering their prices, then I'll tell you inflation's going away. OK, <laughs> but none of these places. Well, but seriously, if they're not doing yeah, it, no, that's the, little, not the lower guy's not doing it. So that means it's not going away. You can put the narrative all you want, but the markets aren't stupid you know i mean yeah. <laughs> they don't believe the news so i think that you'd be, have to be careful when it looks to like like the bonds right now in the tenure this rally is nice you made a higher move high over the last couple of sessions but this is just a corrective move we're in a wide range trade so we're going back to the median you know until there's an actual action I'd be careful getting caught up in it. You know, now this is also fueling the rally in the euro US dollar and the pound US dollar right now. But like I said, these are not big breakouts. You know, like there's no reason for anyone to lock into these trends. So I would use cautious with caution with that and beware of the follow through. You know, I'm not telling you to fade it, but watch those numbers. If unemployment comes out like lower on Friday, that's going to be a complete contrast in terms to these other two numbers. You could see the spike in the tenure and the bonds. Like if unemployment comes out unexpectedly lower, you'll probably see a spike high and see a, a dollar and a, ha a handle and a half move in both the tenure and the 30 year. You know, what would that do to the euro, US dollar and the pound? You see them down like every bit of half a buck to a buck. You know, yeah. taking reversing the trend, you know, so I would be careful, you know, not that I'm always a bear because I'm a floor guy, but this is the kind of situation when you smell a bear trap coming, you know, and I would just, you know, especially when the when the media narratives get starts to get they start fanning it, that fuel, you know, and that fire. That's when I start thinking, hmm. Well, either they're right or they're wrong. And what's the what not most of the time they're wrong. <laughs> so. It is interesting. I had the euro US dollar up as well as many charts when you were talking there, and I appreciate the breakdown. Um, and just going back to where we were April 9th, pretty much, you know, just kind of the highs before you fell off. We had a high there of 108.84. We're at 108.85 right now. And in the span of three days, we were down at 106.50. Um, right. So maybe, you know, just to show, like you're talking about, man, great points as in we've chopped back up to that level. But you see how quickly, even from that level, we gave it up at the beginning of April, back down to almost mm -hmm. 106. And, and right. yeah, so we'll see what happens. Well, and here's a number stuff. for you. You're talking about the euro US dollar right now. The Tiger Forex Report customers know that I've had the monthly directional pivot level in, in there for the past like six months. Okay. And the euro has been treading around that with no more than a couple bucks 
for the last four months for sure you know and it yeah. always seems to be the median that it keeps gravitating back to so right now 108.34 is your target level you know at least for nice. a pullback so can you hang with us for the break we'll talk a little sure. bit of crude finish it up perfect Absolutely. stay tuned folks come back with our man teddy we'll talk a little bit of crude we'll finish up the conversation stay tuned we'll be right back The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We give the S&Ps up about 15 points. We give back some of those gains as we open, but we're trading right now at 53.18. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad, and let's jump into crude. You referenced it a little bit, Teddy. What do you think of the action in crude right now? Pretty interesting. We had some OPEC news this week, um, but a little bit of a pullback from, from those highs that we've had recently with crude struggling a bit. What do you think? Uh, well, I definitely like the slide. That's for sure. Um, the pullback was nice. The, uh, the the break that we had on Monday was significant because we made not just a lower low, um, but on a long term channel for the trend, it definitely is is testing some critical support. That being said, we had an area that um, on Monday bottomed out in our critical support band, which is in the Tiger Forex support. Yesterday, we settled below it. Today, we're trading right below that area. So I would watch the 73.50 to 75 even area. If, if you get above 75 even and can sustain a trade, I think you're going to start to find a base. Like if you look at the crude chart going back to um, between the end of or middle or end of April into the middle of May, you had a real wide where the, the body 
value of trading was between like seventy nine eighty and seventy eight dollars, and it just kind of poked a little bit above and below that. I think we're going to probably be heading into another period like that. Um, am I looking for a big rally? No. Am I looking for a much more to downside? Not really. I think you're probably going to see us settle into a trade over because you got to remember we have fourth of july coming up blah 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 what have you you know um we'll see how the travel patterns are with people you know one of the things i've heard um on one of the stations the other day was that um it looks like people are planning on traveling this year the only thing is what they're doing is they're going the debt to do it that's not a good sign you know so i think yeah. it's going to be a question of is how many people are really going to make that decision and what's their expectations for the rest of the year. Some people may rein back their travel plans. You know, people may go back to more of a COVID staycation kind of um, platform this year. We'll see, you know, so I, that I can't, I can't tell you where it's going to go, but I think you're finding good support where it's at. I don't think there's much more to the downside. I mean, we, I wish oil would be go down to 65, $60 a barrel. Um, but then I'm looking for hoping and wishing and praying. And anytime that thought yeah. comes into my head, you know where I stand. Hey, we only got 10 seconds. I got a question in the den. What about yeah. natural gas, man? Where are you in natural gas? 266 Nat gas. Right now. Um, I, I like that. I think that it's starting to come into a support area. I don't think there's much room to the downside. I love it, man. That was perfect. Teddy, so and I actually was looking at that earlier. <laughs> I love it. That was a quick perfect 10 seconds.